Well, hello, Maverick Traders. Welcome to the Currency Recap. Joe with you here. It is Thursday, August 15th. Let's get into the markets. I'm going to break down the meaningful news of the day, if there was any. Obviously, the technical analysis and share trades with the community. Let's get going. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. As we move into the market analysis, you'll see that we did have a little bit of a directional change. However, the overall patterns in a lot of these currency pairs did not change. Lower than expected jobless claims adds fuel to the U.S. optimism. We did have a flattening CPI that came in exactly perfect, showing that we might be in line for that soft landing. The jobless claims shows that there's still stability in the economy. But in light of what we saw in the jobless claims, things look like they might stay more of the same. Let's break down what, how we finished. So the yen down 1%, U.S. up 0.32%. Frank pretty much down about a half percent there. Uh, Euro pretty much flat. Euro has been one of the stronger currencies that we've seen over the last few days. Pound had a little bit of a spike today, 0.58%. They did have a GDP number. CAD up a little bit. Aussie up a little bit. New Zealand dollar up a little bit. But overall, folks, which is great, is all of the trades that we've been looking at over the last little bit haven't changed. It's kind of a continuation of kind of this bounce, or I should say, retracement or correction um, across the board. At least that's what I'm seeing. The S&P up 1.61%. World Index up 1.49%. Crypto took a pullback. Gold and oil up as well. What I mean by crypto, let's take a look at it. It's just super volatile. Litecoin hung in there. And what's cool, Litecoin was one of these plus three trades that we've been looking at. Guess what? It's still a plus three trade. It didn't pull back nearly as Ethereum did as well, 4.63%. Uh, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin itself, 2.8, uh, 2.2. So uh, real quick, let me give you my market outlook. It's uh, above the 20, above the 50. 20, 50 slope is still backwards. I'm still giving it a negative one because we're in the middle of a move, not a trend. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at it. A trend, folks, is when you have consistent pivot points and resistance points. So this is a trend this is a move i'm not going to change my outlook for the week or obviously yesterday i think if you had the opportunity to make a trade it would have been yesterday but we are a little bit more overextended here take a look at this gap a big gap to the upside here the volume wow with a move like this if it was truly the bottom i would expect volume along the lines of this right these areas but i'm not getting that so it doesn't mean that we, we, we won't exceed the line that I drew. It doesn't mean that we won't float a little bit higher. But to trust in it as putting all of my bull trades to work, it just doesn't make sense here. So let's go over to our economic calendar. And you can see that we had uh, an Aussie employment that looked to be interesting, which came in nice and comfortable. We also had a Great British Pound GDP number, which was in line with its expectations. Locally, folks, we did have an increase in the core retail sales, which is a good sign. Employment came in very bullish in light and, and like I say, following that comfortably strong or that nicely balanced CPI number. So what does that do for us today? Not a lot. Let's take a look at our currency analysis. I'm going to take a look at everything overall, but you're going to see not a lot has changed. So let's start with the franc since it's the first up and you can see it's continued to roll over. I, would, I like the fact it flipped at SAR. So the only thing we got to do is take a look to see if it can actually continue its weakness. This is still a four hour chart here, folks. And you can see that it is right about a level that we haven't seen for a little bit, a little while. And if it can roll over and continue to be weak, I like where the RSI is in this. It's definitely on the low side. It's flattening. Uh, so it looks like it's definitely weakening. So we'll just go ahead and just keep it exactly where it was yesterday. Let's move over to the yen. We know the yen has come off of a pretty good surge. If I move over to the daily here, folks, you guys can see. Take a look at this surge to the upside, right? 
but it's rolling over a little bit and it's showing, yeah, it might be doing a little bit of a bull pullback on the daily side. However, as far as our velocity score goes, this becomes a little bit more interesting. Take a look at the RSI here. It's flattening. It's about to drop a little bit lower where it becomes out of favor. But if I was to hold a line here, I think I'm going to be targeting somewhere around the uh, uh, right around right around the levels that we saw uh, around the 24th of July. So it's definitely showing signs of weakness from the top. And what I mean by that is after the surge that we had uh, on it up to the upside. Moving over to the US dollar, it's still in the same situation. I do like it, it's growing, it's moving higher. It's actually butting up against resistance here on the four hour chart. I'd like to see a little bit more consolidation. You might even get a pullback or uh, consolidation to move to the upside, but the RSI is consolidating taking into consideration some of the economic numbers we've seen in the US, I imagine this might stay sideways and could emerge as one of the stronger currencies. Taking a look at the Euro, the Euro had a very decent surge to the upside and guess what folks, it did have a little bit of a corrective action but it is still, it is still moving higher. It's above its trend line there and it looks like uh, the, the stars are still flipped. I'm looking for something above that resistance level. Um, I'd like to say above what I saw over the last, uh, basically yesterday's area of where it closed, but uh, if, if you're really going to be a little bit more reserved, let's wait for the SAR to flip, and that might be a really cool ascending triangle breakout, and then we can look a little bit further back uh, for our targets. But I do like the year along as well still. Nothing's really changed. Here's the pound. This did have a probability of setting higher highs and in light of the, the uh, GDP, I imagine that's what's surged this higher. But it's a nice ascending triangle pattern. It has actually broken higher on that uh, four hour chart. Now it might feel a little bit overextended. So if you guys want to uh, uh, see if it can pull back before you jump into it, that's great. But it is definitely emerging as one of the stronger currencies as far as velocity goes. Take a look at this RSI. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that. Moving over to the CAD, same idea. The CAD was kind of a sideways trade initially. It did pop up, you can see that, but it is retracing, so nothing has really changed. In fact, folks, what was strong yesterday is strong today. What was weak yesterday is weak today, and what's flat is flat. A little bit of a push and pull on, on the uh, volatility-wise, but there's not a lot of opportunity there in, um, in some of these stocks, and this is one of them, so I'm going to keep the CAD where it's at. Here's the Aussie, one of the risk on trades. However, it was a good trade against the Kiwi. And guess what? It still is. Overall, nice little move to the upside today. It flipped the SAR, but it is still plateauing. It's not like this thing is running away and it's gangbusters. We got an RSI that's flat, uh, taking a look compared to the Kiwi, where you can see the Kiwi is actually kind of consolidating. It had its move. So it is showing a little bit more weakness. It does look like it's kind of running out of steam here and uh, we'll see where it goes. So where does that put us when it comes to our velocity score? Not much has changed. In fact, folks, I did not move any of this. However, I truly believe that patience is definitely going to pay off here. I do like where the dollar is going and I think it might be one of the stronger currencies to pair to some of these weaker ones. The New Zealand dollar, Aussie dollar still works. I know it's kind of strange, but it still kind of works. But uh, is it worth the risk? Eh, probably not. If you guys are looking for um, strong divergence, you're just not going to get it here. I mean, that's just kind of where these markets are at. That being said, um, in the U.S. dollar is showing itself as something that might be a little bit more stabilizing or emerging based on some of the reports that we've seen in the reaction uh, in the equity markets. So I don't have much for you. Let's take a look at what we had uh, uh, yesterday, which I do believe are still good, and then maybe maybe a U.S. pair. Uh, let's go out and take a look at some of those. First off, folks, I really wanted to start it with the uh, Aussie New Zealand dollar, and it still looks really good. We had a little bit of a correction. I do like the fact that it has this nice little trend going on, a nice ascending triangle pattern if I want to go really tight with this, but we have pure targets at some of the areas that we've seen in the past. Uh, let me go ahead and move this right up in this area. Sorry folks, my lines will not draw correctly, but when that, that's a big pit move right there. So if you wanna hold it that long, that's great. Just uh, use your stops. But I love the ascending triangle um, breakout. So you gotta be patient with this. Let it go, make sure that you, uh, make sure that you position size correctly. 
I left that go, but it's kind of funny, right? It's still, it's still a very feasible trade. Not much has changed. Let's move over to some of the U.S. pairs. Um, nice ascending triangle pattern as well. It did break out of a resistance there. It looks like it's creating a base, but if we could get above some of this resistance, it'd be nice to see a target up in this area. Now, the U.S. dollar has to remain strong. I don't think it's the franc weakening as much as the U.S. dollar staying in line and staying strong if Powell can come out and not cut rates. I think that's going to be a pretty big factor on how this moves. The other one is a little bit more risky. It's the yen dollar. Um, I'm just doing it because the yen showing a little bit of weakness against the dollar. I, I really can't get behind any of these because, folks, let's talk about the trades I'm, we're looking at. We're talking about risk on versus risk on, which is the Aussie against the Kiwi. And then we're talking about risk off versus risk off, which is the yen versus the dollar. Yeah, that makes no sense. Now, it, there is opportunity there, folks, but understand it's not going to stay there for very long. Here is the U.S. yen, and it's an ascending triangle that has been confirmed as a breakout. There might be a little bit of a retracement there, but overall, folks, there is potential for this to continue to climb higher. Now, Japan decided not to raise interest rates, and if they did, this would be a much different looking chart. So, it's very difficult to uh, trade two currencies that are correlated against each other, but that's what we're seeing right now. It doesn't mean that you have to do it. What I'm going to do, folks, is just kind of sit back and uh, I, I might throw a dart or two, but I'm not going to make any sort of large decisions just yet. So overall, folks, be patient. Not much has changed from yesterday. If you've taken some action yesterday or the day before, we're in the midst of a pretty good move to the upside in the U.S. markets, which means I haven't seen too much change, at least on the U.S. side. Currency-wise, I haven't seen anything disappoint or uh, change outside of uh, what the Kiwi did. And everything is basically kind of flattened out. So where strength is, it's still strong. Where weak is, it's still weak. Be patient. Wait for your uh, uh, wait for your trades to come in. We need divergence to create true opportunity. It's interesting that I'm actually trying to compare two risk on trades, or excuse me, two risk on currencies and two risk off currencies to make a trade. Great, we can do that. It's not going to last long, and it might have a little bit of more risk than you're uh, comfortable with. Follow your plan. Make sure that you manage your trades. Uh, proper position sizing is everything in these markets. And let's just sit back and see what happens. I'm not going to do much, honestly, uh, until I should say the end of the week and into next. Thanks for joining me, folks, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.